Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight we have a late night insight unboxing video. And it's been a while since I've done an unboxing video, but we actually have four packages that have built up. And I did an unboxing uh, from my brother from across the pond. Nick sent me some amazing decants on my This Year in Perfume 2019. The first 15, 18 minutes is probably me unboxing decants and samples and stuff that he very kindly sent me so I can do more content on the channel. The uh, Fragcom is absolutely filled with unbelievable, amazing, what I call vintage people. Uh, so it's almost midnight here in Texas. Uh, it's, it's late. I'm ready to go to bed. But some of these I want to wear tomorrow and I want them unboxed for you guys. So these are all gifts. Um, should I start with the big ones or should I save the big one to the end? I don't know. I think I'm going to start with the big one. Um, but there is something at the end you should definitely stay tuned till. So... Um, the big package, the big gift, is from a friend in the community who basically reached out and gave me the gift of 2024. He said, Ramsey, and here's the box. He said, Ramsey, um, based on what I've been hearing from you and Russian Adam, one of his fragrances was inspired by you. And I said, yes, it's the Royal Barn. And um, if you haven't heard the story, go watch my Russian Adam uh, live stream. Well, it's actually the um, Arige Ladore Musk Collection is how it's titled. Live stream that I did just a couple days back, okay? Um, and I talked about how one of the fragrances from Arige Ladore is um, inspired by a sort of um, story that I told on Chanel's Queer de Russie, okay? Uh, so I've told that story before. Go check it out on the live stream. But uh, if you've been following my channel, you've probably heard about uh, the way that I described um, Queer de Russie by Chanel many times, many, many times. You know, that uh, unbelievably uh, over uh, sort of decorated high class upper crust of society. You're, you're sitting amongst generals and high class politicians and you know, the Tsar is in attendance because you're in Russia from the late 1800s, early 1900s, and, um, you know, the, the chandelier is crystal, and everyone's in their finest clothes, people, girls are wearing minks, you know, the men are wearing the finest fashion of the day, there's a buffet, as far as the eye can see, made by the finest chefs, but when you leave, you don't get into your Bentley, or Rolls Royce, or G6, or G5, you get into a carriage, and in that carriage, it's pulled by horses, and the horses smell, you know, they're kept in barns, they are, they poop, horses just poop, it is the way it is, you know, horse isn't going to go to the toilet, so there is that animalic outside feel, right? You're in luxury, but you're in luxury from back in the day, and that story inspired Russian Adam to create this, and this is called Royal Barn, hence the R and the B, huh? go figure, uh, and so somebody very kindly reached out and said, I want to send you a bottle. I bought one of the collections, the, the whole collection at first, and so I'm going to keep uh, Forbidden Flower, I'm going to keep um, Paradise Soil, and I'm going to keep Creme de la Creme, and I'm going to give you Royal Barn and my other favorite. They know I love leather, so two the two I really wanted from the collection. So we'll start with uh, this little bad boy. Beautiful packaging. I'll tell you what. Arige Ladore always, always goes in above and beyond on packaging. And look at that. Brilliant. Um, Come with us to the deep past when the royal palaces of the Russian Empire were surrounded by naked nature and handmade houses and barns in the wilderness. This is a civet and oud driven floriental shipra that takes us to the wildest corners of our history. Top notes, Mandarin leaves, vintage Indian civet, which does remind me uh, a little bit of sort of um, the vintage civet in Civet de Nuit. This is the first time I've ever held one of these bottles as I've never held one of the, um, uh, what did they call them? The uh, Classics Collection, where it was like Russian Oud 2 and, um, you know, Russian Musk 3. I, I didn't get to ho hold any of those bottles. I only had decants that Russian Adam very kindly sent me. So this is the first time seeing one of these bottles, and I'm impressed. They have the Arige Ladore logo on the bottom like he did on the um, History of Oud collection bottles, which I've shown on the channel. Uh, and so Royal Barn, I've been wearing it actually as my scent of the day today off of the decant from the mini scent that uh, Russian Adam very kindly sent to me, and I am in love with it. I love this fragrance. This fragrance, 
um, has little hints of a couple of Rige Lodori fragrances to me. It has hints of Civet de Nuit because of that vintage Ethiopian Civet. Um, and, but it also has hints, I must admit, it also has hints of antiquity, just a little bit. I don't know what it is, uh, but it also has hints of antiquity, but with this, um, sort of, uh, earthy, you know, ground, um, soily, you know, hay and, um, black truffles. The black truffle gives it this, um, spongy, mushroomy, earthy type feel. And um, also has the actual, uh, not just the vintage civet, but the fresh Ethiopian civet that we're used to smelling. The pissy kind, as they say. The Uranus kind. So it is animalic. It's built around civet and Bhutan oud oil. And um, these very interesting floral accords, but uh, they, he just nailed it. I mean, I love the dark green touches in the opening. I love the way that it dries. I love the animalic aspects and I love the Civet de Nuit kind of nod, if you will, because I would own a bottle of Civet de Nuit. If money is no issue, I really like Civet de Nuit. That was a Sultan Pasha creation uh, that worked with his good friend Russian Adam. So Civet de Nuit would definitely be full bottle worthy for me if money was not an issue. But Royal Barn, um, absolute love for me. And I really like these bottles now that I'm actually holding it in my hand. I've often said this reminds me of a Reese's peanut butter cup, but man, this is heavy. There is a weight to this cap. Very well done. It's like the hat on the guy from um, Street Fighter. Uh, what's his name? The uh, guy that would rain down electricity on you. Um, gosh, it's been so long since I've played Street Fighter. Someone leave it in the damn comments. Uh, okay, so that is Royal Barn. I love the packaging too. This is like, uh, this actually feels like leather around the outside. It's probably just cloth, but it feels very nice. Yeah, I think it's just cloth. Uh, very, very nice. Very nice packaging. So this goes like this and like this. Very nice. Beautiful. And that Arise La Dore crest kind of sits in the middle. Okay, I see. I see how it goes. So it goes like this. And so the Arise La Dore crest sits in the middle and it opens up like that. Awesome. Awesome. I feel like the luckiest ram on earth. So that's one. The other one, uh, which, you know, you know what it is, right? If you know my taste, you know exactly what this is. The second one he very kindly sent me was Quirtus. And I wore this yesterday as my scent of the day. And um, Quirtus is an absolute love. It also reminds me of a couple of Riz La Dore fragrances. Um, Warren Peace is one, definitely Warren Peace. Someone described this as a sort of um, easier to wear version of Warren Peace. Okay. So Warren Peace is one. And, um, but the other one it really reminded me of is, um, Arise La Dore's Queer de Russi, which is one of my favorite, actually it, it is my favorite Queer de Russi I've ever smelled. Uh, if it wasn't for the fact that it's supposed to be a garment perfume because it has the unrectified birch tar, that could easily be, easily a signature scent for me. Like, uh, I could wear that every day and never get bored of it. I loved his Queer de Russi and I only have like a, a mill or, or so left because he sent me a... Uh, decant just so I could review it for the channel and stuff like that. But uh, man, I would definitely have a bottle of that. So Quirtus is, um, all of these are x-rays, I believe, but the packaging is all pretty much the same. Um, step into an autumn forest full of a wild and leathery aroma. This composition is focused on beaver extracts and executed in a vintage style. It brings together all the nuances of animalic leather. Yes, I'll have some of that, please. Um, from Vintage Tar Oil, which he, he said in one of his videos, if memory serves, that the birch tar oil used in here, they think is over 100 years old. So Vintage Tar Oil, Indian Oud, Smoky Birch Tar, and Narcotic Osmanthus. I love Osmanthus. Absolutely love it. Quirtus is where the forest meets leather. Top notes, Russian Castorium, USA Beaver Tail Oil, which Russian Adam mentioned is, um, sort of, uh... A note that has never been used in perfumery before. I don't know if that's true, but I've never seen it before. That gives you any I've never seen beaver tail oil. Um, and it's supposed to be like 10 to 20 times more aggressive than castorium. So if you love castorium like me, you will love his, um, his Queer de Russi. And somebody kept asking him, hey, can you make a Queer de Russi that we can spray on skin? It's Quirtus. This is his version, as far as I'm concerned, of a Queer de Russi that you can spray on your skin um, because it has the rectified birch tar. So the um, 
osmanthus, cumin, and juniper in the top with a heart notes of birch tar, parajit flower, which I need to look up what the hell that is, vintage geranium, rose, aged co-tinctures of orris, vanilla, and USA castorium. So this co-tincture thing, right, of orris, vanilla, and castorium is something that I remember he did in War and Peace, and maybe that's why it gives it this, but I thought with War and Peace it was patchouli, orris, um, and, and castorium and civet. I'd have to go back and look. But um, base notes of tar oil from circa 1930s. Vintage style Queer de Russi Accord. Yes, uh, I will have some of that, please. Manipur Oud from 2005. Canadian Castorium, Oak Moss, and Violet Leaf Absolute. Um, I mean, just a complete shout out to the very generous, very generous fragrance connoisseur who sent me these. Oh, I mean, I can't wear anything else right now. I'm sorry. I have to wear these. Like, I wore them... Now that I have bottles, I really have to... I feel like I have to wear them. I gotta wear them tomorrow. Um, so I wore... Maybe I'll wear Quirtus again, since I'm, so I don't have to wear Royal Barn back-to-back. -back, although I don't mind wearing something back-to-back. -back, but look how beautiful the presentation is. Russian Adam always goes above and beyond um, on the presentation. So never fails. Never fails to impress on the presentation. So Quirtus... Is the second one very a very blessed ram okay so the the next ones i don't think are going to be anywhere near as interesting as those those are like but um still i want to show you guys some samples and what we will be talking about so the next one's a little baby package um but sometimes very good things are in baby packages so let us see all right i'm going to try to open this without cutting my hand off there we go this is from Allie. Let us see what we have. Let us, let us see. Very well packaged. As always, Allie. Allie's my uh, Amwaz sugar mama. Let's see what amouages we have here. Okay, we've got a handful of them. Come to Papa. Okay, so we have um, Guy La Roche. Ah, these are vintages. That's right. She got some. She got a package from Anouge. So this is Guy La Roche. Jai Ose, Guy La Roche, Jai Ose. Let me pull this up because I don't remember what the, what the, um, these are some vintages I've never smelled before. So let me just pull up Jai Ose, Guy La Roche. Um, this is the EDP. So got Jai Ose came out in, um, uh 1977 i believe let's see yes 77 so there is no jai ose listed on uh parfumo for the edp there is an edt listed so it's listed as a spicy woody shipra with aldehydes coriander peach Citrus fruits, patchouli, sandalwood, iris, vetiver, jasmine, rose, oak moss, ambergris, benzoin, frankincense, and musk. So, I mean, this is from my era. Uh, this is the kind of vintages that I love. Even the uh, women's stuff is absolutely fantastic. So, I'm very excited to um, get to try that. And I will do a video on that one of these days. And then, staying with uh, old Guy La Roche, we have Fiji EDT Vintage. Uh, the Vintage Fiji EDT from 1966. It's discontinued, actually, which is very, very sad. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a green floral Shepra. Uh, and I mentioned before that in the early 60s, there were a couple green Shepras that sort of influenced the green 70s, which number 19 and all that good stuff came out. Private Collection uh, by Estee Lauder came out gray green in the 1970s. But in the 60s, Fragrances like Y, the original Y, not the bullshit they're putting out now for men, like Y Live, um, but this is the vintage Y from 1966, 
from 1964. And then a couple years later, Guy LaRoche put out Fiji in 1966. And these two sort of set the stage for what came in the 70s. So I'm very excited to, um, to get my nose on this. Uh, floral sheep row with hyacinth, aldehydes, Moroccan orange blossom, Spanish galbanum, bergamot, lemon, Madagascan ylang ylang, Egyptian tuberose, English lilac, Florentine iris, French carnation, Italian jasmine, violet, and Bulgarian rose with oak moss, ambergris, and they're, and they're using real ambergris back then, Indian myrrh, Mysore sandalwood, and that is probably real Mysore sandalwood, uh, Malayan patchouli, of course it is, this is from 66, um, Persian musk, Peru balsam, and vetiver. Josephine Catapano is the perfumer, and she did some amazing stuff. She helped work on JHL, which is one of my favorite types of that, of that perfume, that style of perfume, that opium cinnabar type style. But she more importantly did Youth Do for Estee Lauder, which uh, kind of set the stage for opium, JHL, and cinnabar to thrive. Um, she also worked on, I want to say, there is a, um, there's a fragrance from Ralph Lauren called Chaps, and I want to say she had a hand in that. She was the or one of the perfumers of Chaps. So, um, Josephine Catapano is a little bit of a legend. Um, she also worked on a fragrance from Norel in 1968 called Norel, which is also discontinued. That's a spicy green Sheepra from 68. So you've got 64, uh, 66 with uh, Fiji, and then Norel in 68. So I would love to smell Norel one day. I mean, it's like seeing the links of a chain all kind of coming together. It's like seeing a puzzle all coming together. Because remember, when you smell these vintage fragrances, um, you're smelling literally like a, like a, uh, you're smelling a scent in time. You know, it really is developed for that time and what else was going on, what they were competing against, what the style was like. So it's really one of the best ways to go back in time as far as I'm concerned. Okay, uh, enough of that. So also, oh, also this is Guy Laroche Jayose, the EDT vintage. So we have the EDP and the EDT, that's awesome. And then we have Amouage Dia EDP. Um, so this is the Dia Woman, if I'm not mistaken, EDP. Uh, and which actually, um, that's a Jean-Claude Elena, if I'm not mistaken. Amouage Dia Woman EDP Eau de Parfum. Yes, and I talked a little bit about that in the um, women's Amouage live stream that I did. And then we have Amouage Dia 40. So Amouage Dia 40, um, which just came out last year, I want to say. Um, Dia 40 was, uh, the most recent exceptional X-ray. Um, so Dia 40 is a 2023 release, the end of 23. It came out very close to, with Jubilation 40, by the way, for their 40th anniversary. And, um, it is creamy, so, sorry, cyclamen aldehyde. Violet leaf, musk, and black currant in the top with bay leaf, carnation, cystus, orange blossom, rose, tarragon, and ylang ylang in the heart with amiris, guyac wood, iris, and sandalwood. And amiris is a plant that uh, is actually a genus of plants from the citrus family, interesting enough. So some amiris species exude elemi resin. Very interesting fact. Uh, and finally, we have the Dia X-Ray, the vintage Dia X-Ray. So all three, so I could do like a Dia through the years, Dia EDP, Dia uh, X-Ray, and now the new Dia 40. So yes, um, that is uh, very good stuff. I very much appreciate you sending these on. Um, very kind of you, Allie. Uh, let me just mark that we have Dia X-Ray, right there, X-Ray de Parfum, which is discontinued by the way, just in case you guys didn't know. Because of course it is. Because you can only buy the, the 40 now. Um, okay, so let's move on. Next one. Next one is from an unnamed, uh, well, not unnamed. It's not fair to say unnamed. But uh, he or she would like to remain unnamed. So we will not name he or she. Um, we will allow her or him to be a mystery. So let's see what was sent. What is 
this? There you go. But the good old days never were. Didn't know. It's all just nostalgia and selective bias. Eh. I don't know if I believe that. There definitely were good old days. Like, uh, you could think about the um, purchasing power of Americans in the 50s and 60s. For example, um, I feel like I'm unwrapping a fat ham here. We've got bottles. Okay. Oh! Get back here, buddy. Okay. I was gonna say that, um, you know, in the 50s or 60s, many Americans had one member of the family worked. They could afford a uh, car in the driveway. They could afford to put their kids through college. They could afford groceries without going in debt. They could afford all this amazing stuff. One income. They had a job for life for the most part. You know, the wife stayed at home and was a homemaker and all that good stuff. Uh, now it seems like both parties are working, the man and the woman, and they still can't make ends meet many times. Um, so I don't know. The good There were good old days. There are different points of, let's say, uh, empire's life, which affects the people living inside of not just an empire, but a country's life, the ebbs and flows of history. And I think they move over long, you know, stretches. Um, the day-to-day -day stuff sometimes I don't feel like matters. There are big forces at work in history, and we're all caught up in that. There's nothing you can do about it. You know, it's like if you were born uh, in the generation where the young men were sent to World War II, you were sent to World War II to fight. Um, what could you do? Nothing. You were born in that time period. Uh, and so most of them were much different from today. Uh, and of course they were different. They were kind of the greatest generation. But I definitely think that uh, there were good old days. But uh, all, the world has always had its good and its bad. But um, some periods were better than others. But nothing lasts. That's the reality of uh, life on this planet. Nothing lasts when all is said and done. So let's see what I was given. Uh, this is Obsession. I'm guessing this is Obsession for Women. Um... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely Obsession for Women. Uh, it's a pretty fat decant, so thank you very much. I have some juice floating around, so I will be doing an Obsession for Women sort of video one of these days once I get around to it. I feel like sometimes the women's scents get uh, pushed to the back burner, which is not fair. I need to try to prioritize some of these. Uh, vintage Obsession is absolutely stunning. Okay, so the next one here, I'm just going to grab these bottles at will because I don't know what these are even. What is this? I have to try to see. I can't. Oh. Oh, this is the Halston. Yeah, this is the OG Halston. Awesome. Um, this is awesome stuff. I've been wanting a bottle of this for a while. So thank you, perfume god person. You know who you are. Um, this is the original Halston for women from 1974, which is discontinued. Um, the bottle was created by Elsa Peretti. And it is, go look on, um, go look on uh, Parfumo and pull up the advertisements. There are some badass advertisements of this uh, Halston. And um, I love it. I love the advertisements. It's a spicy Sheepra. So I don't know if I love it or not yet, but... I have a feeling I'm going to love it because the perfumer was Bernard Chant, who made some of my all-time favorite fragrances. He made Aramis, Aramis from 64. He made um, Aromatics Elixir from 71. He made Aramis 900 from 73. He made Aramis Devon from 77. He made Azure, which I just showed in my video from 2019, one of my all-time favorite leather sheepers ever. This stuff is 
every single penny it's worth. The Vintage Azurite is one of the greatest fragrances I've ever smelled, especially for my taste. I can't believe this was marketed towards women. I just cannot believe it. He made Cinnabar from 78, which is on my wish list. Um, on the never-ending wish list, I really want a bottle of Cinnabar, but they're very hard to find. I believe it's officially discontinued now. Yes, it is officially discontinued. Um, he made Cabochard from 59, and a um, couple other things, but those are the big ones. You know, Aramis, Aramis, and Azure are probably my two favorites, but I really, really like Devon, really like that green Sheepra for men in the late 70s, and this is going to be, um, this is awesome. Thank you very much. Very awesome. Natural Spray Cologne. Oh, man, I can't wait to try that. Actually, I'm going to try it now. I can't stop. Let's see. Because tomorrow I'll be wearing a Rige La Dore. Oh, fuck. That is very good. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know how I feel about this honeydew melon note in the top, though. It's very interesting. Honeydew melon and peach. It works, though. I don't think I've ever smelled a honeydew melon note in a fragrance where I haven't gone, eh, that's just gimmicky. Here, it actually works. And you have to remember that uh, at this time, Edmund Runitska was playing with melon notes for Dior. So I guess it doesn't sound too off the wall. Just that specific honeydew melon is strange. But carnation, which is a masculine, spicy, floral note. I would have no problem wearing this. None. Um... I got to see how it dries down, but I would have no problem wearing this. It's got frankincense, patchouli, oak moss, vetiver in the base. It's got carnation. Those are all masculine notes. It's really the peach, the floral, the floral rose, orris, lang, and jasmine, which might put some guys off, but not me. I would have no problem wearing this. That's good. That's, that's great from first spray. Um, very excited to get to know that and uh, review it, so... Awesome. Halston was an absolute powerhouse back in the day. Okay, next on the list, we have um, a fragrance called Enjoli. I've never heard of Enjoli. I'm going to have to look this up, but it comes like this. There's kind of the interesting 3D um, draw all your lines to the point bottle. And uh, Enjoli, let's see, Enjoli, okay, you can go like this. Um, Let's look it up. Let's see what it's about. Enjoli. Enjoli. Revlon. Um, 1978. It's a synthetic green. It's a synthetic green fragrance, according to uh, Parfumo. Discontinued, of course. Uh, aldehydes, bergamot, green notes. Hyacinth, peach. Carnation. Jasmine, orchid, orris root, rose, tuberose, amber, cedar, musk, oak moss, sandalwood, and vanilla. Awesome. Um, you can feed the kids and the gerbils, pass out the kisses, and get to work by five of nine. You can bring home the bacon, fry it up in a pan, and never let him forget he's the man. Because you're a woman and jolie. The new eight-hour perfume for the 24-hour woman. I love that. Why don't they have advertisements like that anymore? You know? That is perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Um, the good old days. So there were good old days. Um, okay. Next on the list, we have a Pierre Cardin. Um, I think this is the original women's Pierre Cardin. Uh, the perfume originally belonged to the Charles of the Ritz and is now produced by Revlon. Well, it's discontinued now, so it's not produced by anyone. But it was originally produced by Charles of the Ritz, which uh, does not say on my bottle, so I have no clue which version that is. But thank you, perfume god person. Wherever you are tonight, sending you good wishes. Okay, let's check this Pierre card in. Um... Pierre Cardin was an absolute powerhouse. I have since reviewed fragrances on the channel, like um, Pierre Cardin Pour Monsieur. There's a review, a Vintage Hall of Fame review. This this deserves the uh, Vintage Hall of Fame review that it got, okay? Uh, just absolutely fantastic stuff. And um, let's see what this one is. This one is Pierre Cardin 
Uh, is this card in from 1975? I think you must be. I mean, it's the only thing that makes sense. Cardin, Pierre Cardin. I don't know. How do I tell what you are? Um, this actually smells like, this actually smells like this from the cap. Um, what are you? Cardin de Pierre Cardin. Um, how do I tell? Why am I asking you? Uh, let's see. Let me go to, uh, this is the lotion. Doesn't look like lotion to me there, buddy. Um, Vapo spray, pure card in. Oh, wait a minute. Lotion. Poor Monsieur, men's cologne, man's cologne, poor Monsieur. I wonder if this is the original. Lotion, apre, this must be it. A variant of Pierre Cardin, uh, poor Monsieur. Interesting. Okay, we're going to go, I mean, I mean, shit, I don't know. Um, let's see, let's see if I can tell. Um, a lotion, I mean, look at that. It's like, it's actually like a lotion. Yeah, that's poor Monsieur. Oh yeah, there's no doubt. That is definitely poor Monsieur. But look how old that design is. I absolutely love that. That is so vintage. And I'm all into vintage. Wow, that is very good. So this is the um, Eau de Toilette that I reviewed, okay? Um... Awesome. Very cool. Thank you. And finally, we have another fragrance which I have never heard of. So this is becoming a trend here. This just shows how much vintage stuff there is out there. It's, it's impossible to keep up with it all. Absolutely impossible. Um, and this is called... Oh shit, there's a bunch of these. How do I know which one you are? I'm guessing you're the Fabergé. Yeah, you must be the Fabergé. So this is also a discontinued scent from Fabergé called Audace. Audace. Um, looks like he's going to punch you out. Mac, daddy going to knock you out. Um, so, Audace is um 1983 release. Oak moss, bergamot, chipra accord. My kind of accord. Citrus fruits. Floral notes, jasmine, orange, sandalwood, and spices. Awesome. There's just so much out there. I mean, literally, there's so much out there. This Pierre Cardin is absolutely stunning. This may be better than my bottle. Um, but what's with the lotion? What? 30 mil, 70% volume. You know, I heard some moron the other day say that the 70% means how much the bottle was filled. I almost fell out of my fucking chair laughing. I laughed so hard. Literally, he almost killed me. The guy almost fucking killed me. He literally almost killed me. I mean, I was, I couldn't breathe. Uh, when he said, this, no, no, the 70, dead serious on the live stream. No, no, the 70% means how much they fill the bottle up. I was like, uh, okay. Um, this is really good though. Oh, fuck. Hmm. That is really good. I don't think I've ever had a lotion spray before, ever. Very interesting. Um, okay, so that is the majority of the unboxing, but we have one more to go. And this one I'm not able to talk about yet because I have been instructed by the boss to hold out talking about this until I've been giving the green light. But I'm going to show you what it is because everyone is in anticipation of this little bad boy. And I don't think it's going to be on Parfumo yet. 
I don't think so, but can you see? It's actually not even, the sample she sent me doesn't even have the name on it yet. That's how lucky I am to have this. But if you know, you know. Yes, that is exactly what you think it is, boys and girls. Um, that is exactly what you think it is. And um, to make matters better, I'll put her on the spot because she agreed. So I don't think I'm saying anything that is um, out of, out of uh, line here. But um, she agreed to do a live stream, a part two. Once, I've been, once I can do a video on this, she's going to do a part two with us. But the first live stream was amazing, by the way. We probably could have talked for five hours. But I wanted to be respectful of her time. Maybe I will hold her up for five hours this time. Um, this PR card, it is fucking amazing. So, so is this Halston. It's like a, it's like a, God, you know what it is? It's like a creamy, floral, just scratchy green oak moss thing in the base. Uh, but the creamy floral bit is very interesting. Yeah, but that oak moss, that, that texture of that, I mean, you can't recreate that. They've, they've killed perfumery. They have absolutely destroyed modern perfumery. So, okay, over 30 minutes of me rambling on four packages. Thank you to my um, very kind benefactors. Who sent me these, which I will be wearing with reckless abandon in these next couple days. Um, just happier uh, than a ram and a pen. And um, yes, thank you to everyone who sent me stuff. The samples, the bottles, everything. I'm a very lucky ram to have such a beautiful community standing behind me. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good night. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.